Okay, so uh, kind of a, I'm, I'm the guy that has to follow Dr. McCann, so uh, <laughs> pressure's on me. But um, all right, so let's take a next. Let's take a look at the next problem. Application is slow. We get this call day in and day out, right? And uh, something is slow. Application is slow. It could be the network. It could be congestion. It could be uh, a lot of things. So there are things that you can do with nothing but packet trace to rule out certain things. Okay? And your job as protocol, doing protocol analysis is to definitively rule out, and this is how I'm, I'm going to segue into Dr. McCann's uh, presentation. If you know this part's not even being touched, get rid of it. That's not part of your problem. Concentrate your efforts on something else that you know you can't rule out. Right? So let's do that. When an application is slow, what are some of the usual suspects? Immediately you should think about and rule out. Long round trip time. Not a problem in and of itself, but it can lead to other problems, which are? Bandwidth starvation, okay. We call it BDP, bandwidth delay product, right? <laughs> Basically, you're trickling, you got this massive pipe and you're trickling water through it and you have to wait till it gets to the other side and you're not using your full available bandwidth. Very common problem. Okay? Large what else? Deltas? Hmm? Large deltas? Large deltas is a problem, right? So typically, what you do is you scroll down and just kind of scroll through this and I actually do it at this speed. And what am I doing? I'm just letting my brain pick up on things. So as I'm doing this, what did you guys see? Anybody? So there's a huge delta there. That's a problem. What else? Is it always a problem when you see a huge delta? When is it not a problem? User think time. If I'm sitting there hovering over the mouse, TCP has nothing to do. It may or may not be a problem. You have to actually interview the user to find out. And there are other clues to this. What else is going on? What else do you guys did you guys see? I'm sorry? TCP sequence sauce. Okay. What do we see about the, the, the length here? You're talking about this here, right? Yeah. Okay, what does it show what is it telling us? Anything? Okay. Okay, so we got 1,400 here, 1,500 here, 10 here, 1,500, 1,500, etc. I'm talking about the maximum second size yields. Okay. So I will look at the three way handshake to determine if they agree on really the lowest number. Okay, so here what he's talking about is the maximum segment size. This guy seems to be using 1,360, the other guy seems to be using. Uh, 1460 the default okay but let's say you didn't pick up on that for now <laughs> no, no no this is a legitimate question is it a problem right now do I need to worry about that why don't I not ha why do I not have to worry about that as a problem because packets are going through if there was a huge problem communication would come to a halt it's not coming to a halt. So I'm going to classify that as something to look at, but maybe not right now. Okay? Things are slow. What do we type? What's the first thing that we always type? And actually, you should have picked up on this already, but I'm going to show it to you. And Wireshark makes it very easy. What do we see? Are all Windows updates bad or evil? No. Okay. Windows update means what? For example, this guy, what does that mean? My window used to be smaller, but now I'm letting you know I have a bigger buffer. You can send me more information. Is that good or bad? Doesn't matter. Not, not good or bad, it just means I, I've used up my buffers and now I'm free again. When does it become a problem? 
And what does zero window tell us? Stop sending me data. I can't deal with this. I don't have buffer big enough to deal with you right now. And it's throwing up a stop sign. Whose problem is that? The network? I'm sorry? The host that sent the zero window is the problem, right? And who sent it? And in my, in my packet traces, 192 is always the client side. Is this a server problem or is this a client side problem? Client side problem, right? So when you first saw this, and I'm gonna actually get rid of this. When I got this packet, this is what I did. I was scrolling down and a block of text scrolled past and I said, well, wait a minute, stop, let me take a look. And I go back and I did that, right? Now, why don't I just type TCP analysis that flags? Because I'm stubborn. <laughs> and it's also training. It's training your eyes to pick up on different patterns. Wireshark can't tell you everything that's wrong. Sometimes you have to pick up these patterns on your own. So the more you do it, the better you get at it. So don't always depend on the tool, the analytics of the tool. If you can and you have the luxury of time, sort by the delta column and scroll down and see if there are bunches of deltas that are of same value, 200 millisecond, 150 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds. These are signatures that you can use to look at delayed act problems, for example, okay? Um, so there are different ways to see this problem, to visualize this problem. The first way to do it is you can look at IO graph, all right? And when you open up the IO graph, oops, come down to here and click on advance, and whose problem did we say? Client side problem. So whose window size are we interested in, the sender or the client, or the receiver? The receiver of the data, right? Because the receiver is the guy saying stop. So who was the receiver? I'm looking at only sourced from 192.168.1.1. And what am I looking for? I'm looking at, what am I interested in? Window size. And I'm gonna say graph it. What do we see? Typical jigsaw pattern. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, right here doesn't mean that it's at zero. It's kind of like Excel, right? It just means there could be no value, right? But when you see these peaks and valleys, these jigsaw-like puzzle, it's telling us we have a problem, may have a problem. Another way to visualize this. Let's apply this as a column. Okay, here's a window size, only source from 192.168.1.1. And as we scroll down, so far so good. What happened there? So this, this column right here is the window size. And the fact that window size is going down, is that a bad thing? Not necessarily. I mean, that's what buffers are for. Right? It becomes a problem when it becomes so small that I can't receive any more information. That is a legitimate problem. And it has nothing to do with the network. If anything, the network is sending you too much data. Okay? Another way to visualize this is to look at my favorite, which is Stevens graph. And these are things that I do all the time. I look at Stevens graph and I zoom in. And what do I see here? Steven's graph is nothing more than, uh, over time, how many bytes I've sent. The, the more steep the slope, the better, because it just means that I'm sending more data over time. When I see patterns like this, though, it concerns me a little bit, meaning I have a sudden large amounts of data going out, and I plateau out, I send, kind of plateau out, send, plateau, send, Etc. right? It's not a, so for example here, there's a huge plateau where it's flat. I want to kind of see a consistent line going straight up, ideally. Not everybody will, not every graph will look like this, but ideally that's what you want to see, a 45 degree angle just kind of going slow and steady and increasing, right? More bytes are being sent over time. So this is another clue that I have a window problem. 
looking at windows here and scrolling down is another way of saying it. And another way to do it is by doing the, uh, the, the charting functionality. Okay? So what was the culprit? AV scanner. It was a script scanning, and uh, this website had a lot of scripts built into it. And, um, and the way with JavaScripts and et cetera, it's kind of a choke point. You can't do anything else until that script finishes processing. And when the antivirus is scanning for that, everything else on the web page has to stop. Because even though you might have other TCP sockets and open, et cetera, with JavaScript, you have to stop and process it and wait till it finishes. So everybody kind of chokes up behind it. The web page slows down. And that was our problem. So what did this tell us? How much time do we have, by the way? Is it about 20 minutes. Okay, perfect time. Okay, perfect. So this is telling us that it's not a network problem. MSS, it's different. Okay, put that away. Not interesting for now. Packets are getting through. TCP window size, a big problem. But whose fault? Client side. Is it an infrastructure problem? No. And so then you can tell and, and you, you can rule out this massive infrastructure that you have. You can rule out the server, the load balancers, and then everything in the middle, and you concentrate your troubleshooting on the client. And that's what we did. And there are only a few things that can mess up communication on the client side. Wrong drivers, virus, and duplex mismatch. That's pretty much it. Is this a duplex mismatch problem? How do I know that? It wouldn't work well, but from a packet analysis standpoint, what would I see? Retransmissions, because packets are getting lost. Okay? I don't see that here. What, what I see is a PC that can't deal with the amount of information that it's getting. So it's either a faulty driver, old, outdated driver, or a machine that can't keep up. Okay? And so by doing uh, troubleshooting on the PC side, we were able to figure out that it was a Mac if <laughs> it was an antivirus problem. <laughs> don't sue me. Don't sue me. It's an antivirus problem. All right? Okay, any questions about this one? Again, in and of itself, none of these traces are very exciting or complicated. But it's, what I'm trying to get to, though, is ability for you to kind of divine information that's like circling around these packet traces. Okay, and it's your job to go to that next level and start to pluck this information out and guide people into troubleshooting. Okay? Just from nothing more than packet trace.